This week, the Democrat-controlled House voted on the Equality Act, one of Biden's uh, legislative priorities. While the Equality Act has been presented as legislation that would protect LGBTQ people from discrimination, what, it, what does it really do? Who does it really protect? Joining me now to discuss is president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, Ryan Anderson. Ryan, thanks for being with us. The Equality Act is being billed as an expansion of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which was passed primarily to combat racism uh, and discrimination uh, of that sort. President Biden said this last week. The Equality Act provides long overdue federal civil rights protections on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity, locking in critical safeguards in our housing, education, public services, and lending services, and codifying the courage and resilience of the LGBTQ plus movement into enduring law. Now, this act treats an individual's self-determined gender identity as the individual's sex under the law. It requires Americans to do the same in virtually every aspect of society. What effect, Ryan, do you think this will have on the freedom of thought, speech, and belief? It'll have a huge negative impact on all of those freedoms. Um, and not just on those freedoms. It'll also have a huge negative impact on privacy, on safety, and on actual equality, right? So the misnamed Equality Act turns real equality upside down. It enshrines a radical uh, gender ideology, what Pope Francis has called gender ideology, into our civil rights law. And then it turns that civil rights law not into a shield protecting people, but into a sword persecuting people who believe the truth about our embodiment as male and female. Hmm. Ryan, even some Catholic commentators, I've seen, seen some priests have written that this is about protecting people from discrimination. What would it mean to conscience rights? Should this pass in the Senate? Sure. I mean, look, if, if you wanted to protect people from discrimination, you could have written a much uh, narrower common sense compromise bill that would say something like, if you identify as LGBT, you can't be denied life-saving COVID treatment, which hasn't happened. It's worth pointing out. But they could have written it that way to say people who identify as LGBT can't be denied you know, basic medical care. Instead, what they've done is said that Catholic hospitals would have to perform sex reassignment procedures. So what does that mean for conscience rights? If you are a surgeon, if you are an endocrinologist, if you're a pediatrician, and you think transitioning a patient is bad medicine, if this becomes law, you're going to be on the wrong side of federal civil rights law. The, the, the Equality Act will no doubt impact women, Ryan. The bill states that, quote, an individual shall not be denied access to a shared facility, including a restroom, a locker room, and a dressing room that is in accordance with the individual's gender identity. What effect does this have on women's rights? I mean, it seems men who identify as women would have more rights than biological women. Exactly. And, you know, all of the women I know don't want men who identify as women in their bathroom, in their locker room, in their, you know, God forbid, their homeless shelter, should they find themselves in need of a homeless shelter. They don't want men who identify as women in their daughter's school bathroom, playing on their daughter's sports team. This turns equality upside down because rather than protecting the equality of actual women, it privileges men who identify as women and then says they have a civil right to enter women's only spaces and to participate in women's only programs. That's not equality. Mm -hmm. Ryan, we're already seeing what's happening in women's sports. What impact could this have on the workplace and other areas of society? Are there any protections for biological women in this Equality Act? No, uh, no, no protections for actual women. Instead, there are protections for men who identify as women. What would this mean in the, in the workplace? employers would have to allow their male employees who identify as women into the women's bathrooms, into women's locker rooms. If you have you know, a locker room for changing into work uniforms, the men who identify as women have to be allowed in there. It might also require uh, speech codes where you would have to force mm -hmm. all of your employees to use preferred pronouns, to use new names, um, not to speak in a way that is true, but to speak in a way that affirms someone's gender identity, even if it's, you know, one of the 64 that's listed on Facebook. You could be 
gender non-binary, gender spectrum. This isn't actually what's in the best interest of people who struggle with their gender identity. Right? I mean, we also have to realize that there's a there's a real group of people suffering with gender dysphoria, and it's not helpful if the federal government says that what's in their best interest is cross-sex hormones and surgery. We, we should be helping people feel comfortable in their own bodies. Hmm. States are already beginning to fight for equal rights for women and girls in their states. In Arkansas on Monday, Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, she announced a proposed legislation that would ban transgender athletes from playing on women's sports teams in any school K through 12, as well as college and universities in the state. She added, I want to send a strong message to President Joe Biden and his administration that here in Arkansas, we intend to require schools to prohibit biological boys who self-identify as girls onto girls' sports teams. It will create equal and fair competition by limiting girls and women's sports to girls and women, as evidenced by an original birth certificate. We don't want common sense to be overshadowed by so-called political correctness. Ryan, should the Equality Act pass? What happens to state laws like this? Unfortunately, they would be trumped by the federal law. Um, that's what mm -hmm. would happen. If Congress passes a law saying that the Federal Civil Rights Act requires this policy, states won't even be able to pass their own common sense policies. And, you know, our viewers should just ask themselves, why do we have an NBA and a WNBA? Why do we have separate boys and girls sports to begin with? And it's because of our bodily differences, not based upon subjective gender identity, but based upon objective biology. And so the idea that the federal government is going to go into states and tell them that they have to overturn common sense policies that actually protect equality, again, it turns things upside down. Yeah, well, and it also puts our girls at a great disadvantage because men biologically have bigger lungs, bigger hearts, the, the, their endurance is higher. So it, it puts them at a physical, the girls, at a physical disadvantage when competing against biological men. It just does. Uh, the USCCB has been very vocal, Ryan, against this Equality Act. Uh, they put out several statements opposing it. In a detailed critique issued last year, they wrote, the Equality Act would impose sweeping regulations to the detriment of society as a whole. The act's definitions alone would remove women and girls from protected legal existence. We treasure the First Amendment freedoms of speech, association, conscience, and religious exercise. The Equality Act puts these at risk by requiring uniform assent to new beliefs about human identity that are contrary to those held by many believers of diverse faiths and non-believers alike. Now, the act explicitly exempts itself from the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. What effect will this have on religious schools, religious-run uh, adoption agencies, hospitals, charities, etc.? Sure. You know, the, the Catholic bishops deserve a lot of praise for their um, courageous and in, indeed prophetic uh, work speaking out against this. Um, they've, they've been great. And that statement that you read is exactly correct. What the Equality Act would do is it would guarantee that our Catholic schools, our Catholic hospitals, our Catholic adoption agencies, our Catholic shelters would spend the next several years in court. It would be the little sisters of the poor all over again. It would be the Catholic uh, foster care agency all over again. Why would we want to do that? Why, why, why would a Catholic president, a Catholic speaker of the house want to ram through a law that's going to end up putting all of these Catholic ministries back into court. This bill is not good for religious liberty. It's not good for women's equality. It's not good for privacy, for safety, for, for actual athletic fairness, for medicine. There's nothing good about this bill. In a recent interview, Representative David uh, Cicilline, who introduced, or reintroduced, rather, the Equality Act in the House last week, said this about religious exemptions. Listen. We're going to work hard to get the 10 votes, but you can't allow a claim of religious exemption to eviscerate the protections of the Equality Act. The civil rights law are designed to make sure that people's rights are protected. Well, well, the question is, what about the rights of people of faith? The act also treats any refusal to offer abortion as pregnancy discrimination. 
What happens to decades of conscience protection, Ryan, vis-a-vis abortion at the federal, state, and local levels should this Equality Act pass? The Equality Act would do away with all of those conscience protections, pro-life protections, because it would now redefine those protections as discrimination based on uh, pregnancy. What's amazing about that quote from the uh, um, congressman who introduced the bill is that he treats religious liberty, one of our actual fundamental human rights, natural rights, constitutional rights, as if it's a secondary liberty to newly created rights that he would be creating through the Equality Act by making subjective gender identity a protected class like race. But that tells you something. He thinks that Mm -hmm. religious believers who believe that we are created male and female and that male and female are created for each other should have the same freedoms that racists have and only those very limited freedom. He's unwilling to allow robust religious liberty protections for Orthodox Jews, Roman Catholics, Evangelicals, Latter-day Saints, Muslims, anyone who believes we're male and female. Uh, He's he's using a, a law that was meant to combat racism to combat orthodoxy. Uh, In 2019, Ryan, this bill passed the House. It wasn't taken up by the then GOP-controlled Senate. It's expected to pass the House again, but it'll likely face a battle in the Senate because of the the close margins there. They need 60 votes uh, to pass this, meaning 10 Republican senators would have to sign on to the bill. Do you think the Senate might pass this bill out? The only way I can see that happening is if they abolish the the filibuster, the legislative filibuster. Uh, You know, people know that a couple years ago they abolished the filibuster for judicial confirmations, judicial votes, Mm -hmm. and that's why you get 51 votes and you can confirm a judge. If they do that for pieces of legislation, then it would be a 50-50 split and Kamala Harris casts the deciding vote if it's a party line vote. So then a lot would depend on whether or not Joe Manchin if they get rid of the filibuster, whether Joe Manchin would cross the party line. Uh, so long as the filibuster is in place, I don't see this, this this bill going anywhere in the Senate. Are you surprised there's not been more public outcry against this Equality Act? I mean, do you think people understand what's at stake here? No, I think most people do not know what's at stake, and that's why we haven't heard more of an outcry. And the reason why is the name. Who could be against equality? This is a bill for equality. I mean, the left is really good at PR. Marriage equality, who could be against equality, right? They don't say that they're redefining the very central institution of what marriage is. They say they're in favor of marriage equality. The same thing is happening here. They're not up front and saying, you know, this is the bill that allows boys who identify as girls into girls' bathrooms. This is the bill that forces doctors to do double mastectomies on high school girls who want to identify as boys. If there was truth in advertising, this bill would be dead on arrival. And so instead, they dress it up, and that's why the public doesn't know what the consequences are of this. I want to talk for a moment about your book, uh, When Harry Became Sally. Uh, Amazon decided to remove it from the site. Uh, It's a book about transgender issues that's been on sale for three years now. Yeah, I mean, all your other books are still available there. Have you spoken to anyone at Amazon? I did see that release where they said this was an offensive work in some ways, or it had offensive ideas in it. Yeah, and that is the only communications uh, we've had from them. All, all they will say uh, is that it violates their content policy, but they won't tell us how it violates their content policy. They won't tell us which page is the offending page, what sentence is the offensive sentence. This book has been on sale for three years. It's been praised by professors of psychiatry, psychology, philosophy, law. I struggle to even um, uh, uh, imagine what it is about the book that is objectionable mm-hmm. unless they simply disagree with the viewpoint. They disagree with the conclusion, right? So it's not how we say it. It's not how rigorously we defend it. It's not how many footnotes or citations or good arguments. It's that they just don't like that we believe we're created male and female and that male and female are created for each other. That's the bedrock proposition that they reject. You have a group of senators who've written a letter to Amazon asking them to explain themselves and why they basically deplatformed your book, Uh, Rubio and and, uh, Josh Hawley and a few others. Your thoughts on that question? I mean, now you've got the, you know, members of the Senate asking Amazon for an explanation. Do you think you'll get one? 
it remains to be seen whether or not Amazon uh, responds to this. M my sense is that um, they will uh, be much more likely to respond if in 2022 20, uh, the election gives the GOP control of the Senate. Um, I think what, what we're seeing here is that with Donald Trump no longer in the White House, with Bill Barr no longer the attorney general, big tech is flexing its muscles. And this mm. probably means that uh, conservatives and uh, people of faith are going to have to consider what are the limits to the liberties of big tech. Yes, it's a private business, and so Amazon has freedom to do what it wants to do, but all of our liberties have limits. And we're going to have to think mm -hmm. really hard about what should the limits be when it comes to the liberties of major tech corporations that control so much of our public life and our digital public square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 80 percent of the book sales globally. So that's a big that's a big number. Uh, when Harry Became Sally, Responding to the Transgender Moment by Ryan T. Anderson is available at barnesandnoble.com and with a publisher and counter books. Ryan, thank you for being here. Thank you.